You have a lot in common with Duke Ellington, uh, both in the music and you both painted. Right. Well, Duke is the one who got me into painting, funny enough. Is right? Yes, he told me. I had a wonderful talk with him once again on an airplane, and uh, he said, "Do two things. Don't don't do one." You know, I was just singing at the time and really involved in music. And he said, uh, he said it's nice to do two things, and I, I found such great rewards from taking his advice, because as soon as I get spent with the music, you know, and then it's a great relief for me to paint. And then as soon as I feel wasted that way, I go back to the music. And it's a great seesaw uh, existence now in my life. It keeps me creating. It keeps me, I don't ever feel like I have to, was, I have no imagination today, so I don't know if I can do anything today. I, I never feel like that now. I just simply go to work on either music or painting, and I'm always flowing now. So he, he gave me some wonderful advice. When you painted that painting over there, did you have to get actually sit for you for the painting? No, that was a funny kind of painting because uh, it, was an on an, it was on an album cover that, that he, uh, that, that I loved the photograph of it. And I usually never paint from a photograph, but in this case I said, well, Duke isn't here. This was in London. And I said, gee whiz. Um. And then the very top of that painting, this, I started painting the background black. Mm -hmm. And then it just started dripping. And I kept it in. I just left the accident in, and I called it. I ended up calling it Black Rain. And this was this was bef thank you. This was before uh, Duke had passed away. And uh, you know, I had no idea that it came out that nice until friends of mine came by and just said, "We really like that." And uh, then I just kept it. Did uh, the maestro get a chance to see it? I think he did. There was a showing of, of uh, a painting he did of Billy Strayhorn and a satin doll painting that he did. That, and uh, it's amazing how what a what a nice uh, touch he had when it came to painting. His painting was very much like his music. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really don't know too much about how productive he was with it, but when he did it, it, it came out just as good as any any painter could. And, uh, hope for. Do, do you know anything about his poetry? He used to write a lot of poetry. Well, uh, yes, I, I used to receive a, a, a lot of cards from him through the years, and there would always be some wonderful poetry. Um, he always wanted me to write with him, and I, d I don't know how to do that. So he said, oh, yes, you can. And he said, you, you just do it. and." Uh, so I tried and tried and tried for months, and when I finally came up to him with a song that I wrote for him, it was of a famous lick that was in the orchestra. And uh, I sang it for him. I said, I think I wrote it. So he said, let me hear it. So I sang it for him, and he says, I wrote that many years ago. <laughs> so that's the end of my composing career. I just haven't got that talent, but well, uh, <laughs> you never know, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> the last tour you did with Ellington was, was it two or three years ago? Or? Yes. Mm -hmm. you, well, did you get, you, obviously I think you mentioned you had a chance to keep up with him, you constantly remained friends. Yes, very. Do you remember your last time with Duke Ellington before he died? Well, well, the last time was when he was in the hospital, and it was just marvelous. I, I didn't have the nerve to visit him in the hospital. After hearing how he was, I just spoke to him every other day on the phone. And he's just, uh, once again, beautiful right till the end. You know, he just said, that almost like three nights before he died, he said, just take care of your mom and your sister and, you know, and he was always thinking of other people. He wasn't right during the, his last days and in pain, he was thinking of other people. He was a beautiful man beside being an, a, a wonderful artist. Very, very strong in my life. 
One time he sent a, uh, I was really by myself. I had separated from my first wife and I was by myself in a hotel room on Christmas Eve and very, very lonely, never ex realizing that I've heard stories and read short stories and long stories about things that happen to people like this and all of a sudden here I was by myself and feeling very low. And uh, he sent over a whole chorus and the, in the hotel hallway, I just heard this choir singing, and I, didn't, I opened the door, and there they were, all different nationalities, Chinese, white, colored, everybody, and they were all smiling at me, and they were singing on a clear day. <laughs> and it, it, it's, this is the way Duke was. I mean, he, he was giving, I think what he really liked, I think what he really knew is that if we look at life in the right perspective, that that there really are the miracles that do happen, that they always talk about in Catholicism, you know, that these miracles. And he, I think he, he knew that there were miracles in life if you just did things for other people rather than for yourself.